Ready. And they're off. Racing over the mile and a half, the full Oaks and Derby course and distance for this Dalbury Coronation Cup. And Point Lomsdale is just the early leader from Westover. With Hurricane Lane in the blue jacket, Tunez towards the outside in red sleeves. And Emily Upjohn is dropped in as they race round the first right-hander going uphill, uphill for the first five furlongs plus. And it's Point Lonsdale and Tunez disputing it now. Uh, with Hurricane Lane angling across towards the inside running rail in the hands of William Buick. Westover, who was perspiring freely down at the start, back in fourth, and then Emily Upjohn. So getting across now towards the inside of the course with Outwide Tunez of Point Lonsdale and Hurricane Lane on the running rail. Followed by Westover and Emily Upjohn, and they are still climbing as they race on now towards the final mile or so. Hurricane Lane, maybe just about leading the past Irish Derby and St. Ledger winner on the inside of Point Lonsdale. Tunez is third out wide of Westover, and then two lengths last to Emily Upjohn. Just gradually turning left-handed as they reach just about the highest point on the race course and beginning the tumble down towards Tattenham Corner. Point Lonsdale shadowing Hurricane Lane. A length and a half back to Westover on the inside of Tunez and still waited with Frankie de Torre at the back on Emily Upjohn. Downhill now and racing towards the final five furlongs and just inside the five and on the way down to Tattenham Corner. Hurricane Lane, the inside of Point Lonsdale. There's just nothing between the pair of them. They go stride for stride, waiting in the wings behind them. Tunes on the outside, west over. We'll just need an out at some stage there on the inside and Emily up, John, as now they stretch on down the home street. Point Lonsdale serves up the challenge to Hurricane Lane. Here comes west over in third place. Tunes looks a little bit flat foot and Emily up, John, begins Getting a charge down the outside, a dangerous looking charge, and Emily Upjohn has quickened up superbly to lead inside the two, and she's away from Westover. Then Point Lonsdale, Hurricane Lane, and Tunez, and racing down towards the final furlong is Emily Upjohn, so unlucky in the Oaks 12 months ago, stumbled at the start, making absolutely no mistake this time. This time in the Derby Coronation Cup, another Group One for Frankie Dottori. Beats off Westover in second. A long gap back to Point Lonsdale in third. Tunez and Hurricane Lane. In a different league, the filly Emily Upjohn becomes the first female to win the Coronation Cup since 1991. And boy, oh boy, as she announced her four-year-old season in style. Last year's unlucky Oaks runner-up defeats last year's unlucky Derby third two who've got the world at their feet as four-year-olds and the pair well, well clear. Emily Upjohn, how confident was Frankie Dottori taking a pull round Tattenham Corner and then unleashing her to see her get to the front too soon? But he had no choice. She was away and gone. Westover closing down the deficit late on, but he was never going to get to her. She was way, way too good. That was a, a devastating burst between two and a half down and the furlong pole, and Frankie Dottori could spot the whole field all the way around this mile and a half. My word, what's she capable of? Brilliant performance, Emily Upjohn. It was, and it was her speed, I think, as well, that we saw showcased on that downhill run from Tattenham Corner. 10.84 from the three to the two Whoa. on the on-screen sectionals. It, that's not looking at just em Emily Upjohn on her own, but 10.84 on the on-screen sectional, then 10.9 from the two to the one. Um, Mid-race, it was just even fractions, really, between 12 and a half and third, the upper end of, of 12 seconds. I think Hurricane Lane and Point Lonsdale went off just at an even gallop, um, but she has really shown that burst of speed, hasn't she, coming after, uh, into the home straight, and that's what's won her the race. Won her it quickly, and Frankie able to coast inside the final 100 yards. A fourth Coronation Cup for Frankie de Tori after successes on Cracksman and Swain and Mutafoweck. And just amazingly... A second for John Gosden after Cracksman's victory five years ago. This was so, so impressive. And she and, and Westover were the two horses who had the potential, really, the, 
the talent to go forward this season. And in some respects, Jane, it's heartening that, that they've come to the fore. But she's way too quick for him. Yeah, she's just got a lot of class. And to be fair, I'd say Frankie, while they're going even up front, he'd have preferred a stronger pace. Hence, he commits early. Had it been a real uh, test of stamina, I'd say he'd have held on to her for a little bit longer. He was looking at Rob Hornby in the pocket. And the German horse, who'd been a little bit keen, tunes on his outside. He's not going to get stuck in any traffic. He wheels out once they get around the bend. And he asks her early. That burst of acceleration puts the race to bed and as you say Martin easing down at the line but ultimately Hurricane Lane no excuse perfect on the inside settled well upsides Point Lonsdale William Buick was able to dictate things as he wished but watch this move from Frankie outside the German horses they cross the road and he asks for effort she gets balanced and unlike last year on much quicker oh. ground this is the burst of acceleration that stamps class group really? one class and a filly with the world at her feet and he's only nudging yeah. and I bet he thought oh my god I've got there too soon yeah the three to the two was amazing wasn't it from her to quicken up in that manner and look Westover's probably run the race of his life as well in second in all honesty I came into this a little bit underwhelmed by the group of horses thinking of all individually they've had flops they've had days where they've not performed we needed to see this from Emily Upjohn she threatened to do it and then she blew out in the King George last year in face of her biggest test this was her biggest test again today and she has really delivered some performance hasn't she and a big call for Andrew and Madeleine Lloyd Webber to buy into this filly, presumably for a, a king's ransom, after she'd already shown so much ability in the colours of, of John Shack. And previous owners have retained an interest in her. She is going to be some serious addition to the breeding shed, but we've got so much more to enjoy between now and then. And all the major middle distance prizes... You know, must be in her sights now. You remember after last year's Oaks, she was favourite for the Ark, Jane. She was indeed. She may well be favourite in a couple of minutes' time if she's not there already. But what's crucial is what she's shown today is the ability to quicken on good to firm ground. We know she can handle slow ground from what we saw in the Musidora and the and the British Champions uh, Mares race last year. But um, look, she always threatened to be good. We were talking ruining her misfortune last year. Well, this year, today, let's bask in her glory because the, the crowd came to see a superstar we know the man on top is good he's had his ultimate final coronation cup on a mare that could give him some big days yet Charlie Appleby has just reported to our team that the ground he felt was on the quick side for Hurricane Lane or William Buick did not a not a massive surprise but the the sire of of this winner see the stars was very much at his best on top of the ground like him she has that beautiful long rangy balletic stride yeah and just to give everyone a little bit of her we've got Westover in the Judmont Stilks we've got Coolmore with uh, Point Lonsdale Godolphin with Hurricane Lane this is a filly that did go through the sales ring she was picked up for 60,000 as a yearling at book two of Tattersalls by Blandford Bloodstock so the chance was there yes she's in John Gosden's yard but there was a chance there to pick up a filly for but Tom Goff you know, wasn't asleep <laughs> relati Goff, relatively Lampard inexpensively Lampard. relatively inexpensively in today's market for 60,000 in 2020 so well done to all concerned Remember when she broke her maid and Frankie was on the all-weather, I'm pretty sure, back yeah, in November or something of her two-year-old year, and Frankie just said, wow. Then she went to Sandown in what is habitually a very strong maiden on classic trial day. She went off a ridiculously short price favourite, novice, sorry, under a penalty, yeah. beat a really well-bred field, and then she's not really looked look back other than that weird aberration in the, in the King George, but... You, you wouldn't bet against her putting that right, as she has put the Epsom wrong right today. Dottori and Gosden, it, they've got Soul Sister to come in the Oaks and a rest in the Judmont Silks tomorrow. Angus McNay, they might just be getting started, but you're going to struggle to better that for a performance of sheer quality in class. Boy, has she got some speed, Nick. She quickened up in style from the three to the one and left them for dead. That was very impressive indeed. 11 to 4 beats Westover, 5 to 2 favourite in second place. Made to look very one-paced Westover, although he was going on again at the end, but uh, she blew him away, and uh, time's good. 2.33.78, 1.92 outside, sorry, under standard. Let's uh, bring Dave in then. Um, well, it was... Um, it was the push-button stuff from the Tory, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Push-button is exactly the uh, words. Already in front there, down the outside while we've been talking, but uh, travelled throughout. I knew Frankie was going to not um, not mess up. He was determined to make amends for um, 
last year's um, last year's cock, cock up, um, and uh, it done it in no uncertain terms. I could see it coming, a, a really good performance, but I wasn't quite expecting this. But um, you've got to hand it to Westover. He's run two cracking races over this course and distance now, and um, has come up against two absolutely brilliant horses and not got the best of runs either time. But I don't think on this occasion, despite the fact that the German horse held him in a tiny bit in between the two and the one that he uh, it would have made any difference to whatsoever and indeed for a while he got out and looked as though he was trapping like the winner but then all of a sudden Emily Option just went flying past him and this uh, is a mare filly with the world at her feet as uh, James uh, said wherever he goes in group one company now he gets the mare's allowance yeah. the filly's and mare's allowance and that is priceless when you've got a top 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 quality horse like that I think she'll be favorite for the next start, that is for absolute certain. It must be Ascot, must it? Must be, must be King George. And to think she went off at 12 to 1 on her debut when she won at Wolverhampton. It's another group winner from Tattersalls. Right, uh, time for Carlisle. This is Division 2 of the uh, Six Furlong Handicap. And 